you could be offering the best new products in the world, but if you don't have the effective branding, marketing, and promotional tools for your products and services, then you're probably not getting the best results you need to reach your target audience. Mr. Troy, can you hear that? Allow QTV yes. and media to translate a more efficient process and to bring clarity to your current or future businesses. Take advantage of our low-cost, proven creative opportunities. Email us at qtvmultimedia at gmail.com. That's qtvmultimedia at gmail.com. Or just simply click and leave us a direct message. And don't forget to leave your full contact information. And please share. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to QTV. This is another episode of knowledge and understanding. Hey, greetings, peace, blessing, healing, and abundance. Happy Friday, everybody. Family, hope that you're staying safe, taking care of yourself and each other. And we hope that you have blessings on your travel, your journeys to and fro. Real quick, we're going to do our shout outs like we always do. Shout out to our partners over at, as you can see, Peacock's Project, keep them off the streets, a uh, youth organization for all of your mentorship and positive reinforcement. Project, keep them off the streets. There are Peacock's Inc. on Instagram and Peacock's Incorp on Facebook. Also, Seeds, Lawn, and Hauling Service. Seeds, Lawn, and Hauling Services, clean outs for your clean outs, lawn care, and local pickup and delivery. Also, huge shout out to Dr. Harper over at Ministries of the Holy Spirit, MOHS. How y'all doing out there? And uh, shouts out to everybody on Facebook in the chat. Uh, we have a special guest for you guys today. You don't want to miss it. So I want you guys to take a second. Uh, please share this uh, interview, this exclusive. Um, this is a hot topic, and me and Mr. Troy, we're going to introduce who he is, and uh, he's going to tell you a little bit about himself, uh, but today's topic, topic uh, is about bipolar, and um, I was just speaking to him, the author, about um, how that is running rampant in our community um, for us, you know, misdiagnosed, underdiagnosed um people are not taking their medication so there's a few things that we're going to dive right into and uh so shouts out to you 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 and you and i want you to know that you rock and that you're all that and i'm not taking it back mr troy how you doing sir good, good. Nice thank you for having me on the show Thank you, thank you, Mr. Stevens. Mr. Troy Stevens is in the in the building. If you guys can give us some hand claps, if you have any questions, be sure to type it in in the comment or in the chat. Uh, people on YouTube, happy Friday to everybody, everybody. So we're gonna jump right into it, Mr. Uh, Mr. Troy. We don't want to hold you long. A um, little bit about yourself. Uh, where do you, where do you where do you reside? I live in Satellite Beach, Florida. Um, it's pretty much paradise here. I've uh, been here about three years. I moved here for an engineering job from North Carolina. Yes, sir. And um, uh, it ended up finishing my book last year in May and started a publishing company called Battle Press that I have published like 25 books. Really? So uh, you are so a publisher like, too? Yep. For, are you for hire? Yeah. yeah. I'll publish books. I'll edit and proofread and format for paperback or ebook. Uh, really? Make the create the covers and then publish on Amazon. Okay, so are you uh, are you an illustrator too, or you know? I I have a guy that works for me who's really good illustrator. Right, because there's gonna probably be a few quite a few people um, that might join us that are authors because we've been actually getting a lot of calls pertaining to uh, proofreading and. Uh, I do graphics, QTV. Uh, I didn't even say it, but that's what we offer as well. Uh, exclusive interviews, marketing, promotion, and things of that nature. So we most definitely uh, can continue our conversation. Maybe we can cross promote and send people both directions. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah. So uh, thanks for, uh, for for joining us on QTV today, ladies and gentlemen. We have uh, non-fictional author, uh, Mr. Troy Stephen. Um, he said he resides in 
Satellite Beach, Florida. Right, right. Tell us how, how's the weather down there. I mean, like, tell, tell us about the, that 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 part where you where you where you live. Yeah, it's a good time of year. The temperatures during the day get up to about seventy five. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sunny most days. It's the rainy season, so it rains about every day at night. And, really? Um, yeah, I live. I can see the ocean from my window mm -hmm. where I live, and it's oh, a man, great place yeah, to live. It's to be a beautiful, uh, beautiful sight to see. Yeah, it's it's close to Melbourne, Florida. So okay, that's so what, people know so, that more than. So, are you near any of, of the attractions that's in Florida? Are you, what what attractions are you near? I'm about an hour from Orlando, so there's Disney World. Okay. Uh, the Kennedy Air um, Kennedy Space Center is about an hour away, north of me. Okay. And, Do you uh, visit those yeah. often? I've I've visited several times when people come visit me. We we go, you know. Right. So, try to watch the rockets take off. Right, right, right. I, I would love, I would love to, um, to see that uh, one day. I, I would love to get down there and uh, to actually see that with my own two eyes. Uh, hopefully, uh, so sooner than sooner than later. Yeah, yeah. So I understand that our uh, engineering has been your bread and butter. Yeah, I went to Purdue University and got an electrical engineering degree in '84, mm -hmm. and then I. Worked, um, moved to North Carolina and got married in 1990. Mm -hmm. um, lived there for 20 years. So I've been an aerospace engineer for most of my career. Mm -hmm. I got a master's degree from NC State University in 95. My bipolar, uh, my first epi bipolar episode was in 1993. So I've been battling bipolar since then. Right, right, right. Okay, um, okay. So, so tell us. What what does the engineering tell us tell us a little about engineering? What what does that entail? Yeah, my job mainly I did uh test engineering mm -hmm. for aerospace companies like um L3 Harris. We're making the integrated control unit for the F35 jet. Okay. And it has about 25 different types of modules in the unit mm -hmm. that, and it you know sits on the airplane, gets installed on the airplane. So my job was to test each of these different modules. And then once they were all tested, put them into the system and test it as a system. And along the way, I did a lot of technical writing, you know, procedures and processes and uh, test reports. So a combination of technical writing and test engineering. So so you love, so this is what you love doing. So it's not considered work, right? They say when you love what you do, it's not considered work. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I loved it along the way and then I, Pretty much retired from it and started the publishing company, mm -hmm. which I love even more. But yeah, I've been lucky right. with my career. Awesome, 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 Mr. Troy. So, um, children, grandchildren, you know, you have any uh, kids? I have four kids. Yes, sir. Yep, um, 30, 28, uh, 21, and actually 34. So, three girls and a boy. Okay, and I and I hear you a grandpapa two times. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Actually three. Actually three. three. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, you want you want to shout them out? You want to you know want to shout them out right quick? Yeah, shout out Braylon mm -hmm. and Carmela and Moses. Awesome. Uh, they're awesome. five, three, and six months. Oh man, happy life, happy life, happy life. How's the, so? How's the granddad chair doing? It's doing good. Awesome, awesome. So, so um, we're gonna let's, let's let's bag up a little bit. What's like? Tell I'm us. Sorry, about could you. I? I I made a mistake. I need to plug in my computer. So please talk for a bit. I'll be right back. No problem. No problem. So once again, we want to shout out to everybody in the uh in the chat, Facebook Live. Let's go over here and, and check on some of the people. We see Lene, Pastor Curtis. Thank y'all for joining. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, today, well, a special guest today, uh, we're, we're, we're honored to have uh, the author, um, Troy Steven. Um, he's going to talk about his, his book and, and dealing with uh, bipolar disorder. Uh, if you guys can share this feed, that would be awesome. Uh, if you know anybody that deals with this type of disease um, or, or, or disorder, should I say, uh, bipolar um, we know that that is running rampant in our community. So if you guys could share this with your loved one, okay. with your friends, so we would say, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys for joining. Happy Friday. Um, yeah, so we're going to bag up a little bit. Mr. Troy, you, you okay now? Apologies. 
But I'm no, good no now. Problem. No, no problem at all. No problem at all. So we're gonna back up a little bit. Uh, can you expound on some of your uh, educational uh, uh, background? I, I heard you say a few things, but can you can you reiterate again your background, educational, and uh, maybe credentials? Sure. I grew up in Kokomo, Indiana, and then went to Purdue University and got my bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. Yes, sir. And then I got my um, electrical engineering degree, master's degree from North Carolina State University and worked in aerospace for 25 years. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome, learn, awesome. Learn something every day. <laughs> right, right, right. So so in the, in the, in the case of engineering, um, and you dealing with the aero, aerospace, right? Yeah, I work for Sikorsky Helicopters, um, Lockheed Martin, uh, Lord Aerospace, who makes active vibration control systems for helicopters. Yes, sir. Um, and Parker Aerospace. I've worked for a number of different companies. I was a contract engineer, so I would go, um, I could work for a company for two years and then that's kind of like the limit for them for contractors. So I went from company to company around the country, probably had different, 10 different jobs. Right. So is that a on a scale, is that good or bad? I mean, two years, but did, I'm quite sure the, the pay made it way out, right? <laughs> yeah, it was good. I, I mean, I really enjoyed the traveling. I never really went anywhere that I wanted to live and stay. So I would get job offers, but I would move on to somewhere else. And then I ended up here in Florida. So it, it all worked out good. But, right, right. But so yeah. so you're saying, so for those two years, you were gone from home for, for two years at a, at a time? Or, I mean, what? How, yeah, I would actually move. I would actually move. I would I would go rent a place and I'd move all my belongings with me and uh, go from, I lived in, started in Raleigh. I worked there for about 12 years, permanent jobs. And then I started contracting, went to Connecticut for two years, mm -hmm. um, Utah for two years, Oklahoma for two years and LA for a couple of years, back to Raleigh a couple of years. And then now to Florida. <laughs> wow, wow. So are you are you currently still employed with the engineering? No, I'm not. So COVID hit last year. Um, you know, you won't hit it. So I started at a new job with Collins Aerospace in November mm -hmm. and got let go at the end of March. They got rid of all their contractors. Oh no. At the end of March. So I um I finished writing my book and then I learned all the ropes and started the the publishing company. Um, awesome. Awesome. I might go back to aerospace at some point and do it part time, but right. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome, awesome. So now that you uh, you ventured in the field of becoming an author and, and a nonfiction, you want to tell the people, you know, that might not know what nonfiction is. <laughs> we that you know just give them an explanation of what nonfiction is in that in that genre. Yeah. So my nonfiction that I'm familiar with mostly is self-help and that's what my book is self-help book so it's a lot of research and talks about what bipolar is and mm -hmm. about what the disease is and um, it's a it's a battle plan that I put together based on the recommendations of the psychiatrists yes. so the consensus of the experts in the medical community is that successful treatment of bipolar disorder depends on diligently following a comprehensive treatment plan, mm -hmm. including medication, mm -hmm. educating yourself about the illness, communicating with your psychiatrist and therapist, having a strong support system, and helping yourself by making healthy lifestyle choices. Awesome, awesome. And so these are, these, are these some of the, uh, the bullet points for your chapters in, in, in Breaking Bipolar? Yeah, so I... I made, made a bipolar battle plan made of nine weapons, I call them. Okay. And the weapons, go, you know, based on a whole life wellness plan, like I just described. Right, right. But it's the weapons are a contingency plan, enemy recon, optimize your medication, find the right psychiatrist, train your mind, train your body, recovering from a bipolar episode, mm -hmm. psychiatric hospitals, and legal rights. Right, right, right. So, so this, 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 this book you have, Breaking Bipolar, Break the Whole Bipolar Disorder Has Over Your Life. That that description alone sounds so powerful. Like we spoke earlier about, you know, this 
I guess I want to call it an epidemic running wild in our community, or like I said earlier, um, for our community, um, the misdiagnosed, underdiagnosed individual uh, not taking their medication, and then we have this huge part where some of these these disorders are not dealt with properly. Then we have individuals that individuals that run into law enforcement. So I don't know if you could maybe speak on that, you know, later on in the show. But uh, let's talk about the book. You know, I, I see uh, about the book, Breaking Bipolar is an empowering self-help book with clear, detailed instructions on how to create a powerful battle plan to break the hold bipolar disorder has on your life um, and eliminate bipolar episodes for good. So I, I was I was also reading that you had been, you know, like you said, battling this, this bipolar disorder since um, 1993. So this kind of... I, I do know this kind of made you an, uh, an expertise in this field. Am I correct? So to speak, yeah. I've uh, learned a lot along the way, had lots of ups and downs, which is bipolar, highs and lows, right. I guess you could call them. Right. Um, okay, so before so about... I get into some questions, like when, when you found out that's what you were dealing with, can you expound on the uh, what you felt, what 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 prompt you to go seek help and how did how did that take place? Um, I began being anxious and not able to sleep. Um, maybe feeling a little violent. Mm -hmm. uh, my mood was fluctuating up and down. I had no idea what was going on. Um, I had actually quit my job, which was probably part of going into mania. And I had, I was at home for about three months and this started happening. Um, I got to the point where I couldn't sleep and decided, well, I'm going to drive down to Florida and hole up in a hotel or a motel for a while to try to figure out what the heck's going on. But I got about two hours away from Raleigh, started heading south and I couldn't bear to leave my kids. So I drove back into town and I went to an emergency, emergency room of a regular hospital Mm -hmm. and described everything that was going on with me. And they transported me to a psychiatric hospital. And I voluntarily admitted myself into the hospital because I was just, didn't feel safe and I had no idea what was happening. And uh, pretty much had a psychotic break when I was in the hospital, got put on medication, I was there about three weeks and then came home from the hospital changed forever. How did this happen to me? How did I lose control of my mind? You know, and have had to pick myself back up and, uh, you know, proceed with life. Right. Um, so, so, so for our listeners, and I know you just explained that, but from your, your personal experience, just to home in on a, with a magnifying glass and for our listeners, what are some of the things to tell them if they are experiencing some of these, what are some of those things that you can tell them again? What, if they're feeling, let them know again, what are some of those things? And we're gonna, we're gonna continue to get into some more questions. Yeah, so really with bipolar, you're either, if you're bipolar, your mood is fluctuating and you'll go in, if you have an episode, which I call a serious episode where something bad happens that you, you know, crash and burn, you most people start with mania and they'll they'll have a uh, euphoric thoughts mm -hmm. lots of energy not sleep as much um hallucinations paranoia there's all kinds of symptoms that people could have so in my book i have a checklist for mania that has about 15 things on the checklist so people can read it and say am i experiencing this am i experiencing this check it off you know maybe i'm maybe i'm having mania and right. then, then mania, usually you'll, you'll crash from the mania, mm -hmm. something bad happens, and then you'll, the people will get depressed. So people who are bipolar are depressed more than longer period of time than they're man manic in most cases. Okay, okay. So there's like a drop down box with, some, with a few other things that we uh, might need to pay attention to as well. So the hallucinating, yeah, just... yeah, so with the hallucinating, that, that comes without any recreational drug usage? Um, well, I'll tell you the truth. I used to do some, smoke some pot. 
Mm -hmm. and maybe it exasperated things. Okay. Okay. Um, would I buy, if I didn't smoke pot, would I have been, had a bipolar episode? I would say so. My dad was bipolar. Mm. Sometimes bipolar runs in the family. It's genetic. Okay. Um, but yeah, drugs aren't good. Right, right, right. Yes. So, so, okay, okay, okay. So you, you kind of explain the, the, the attributes of, of the disorder. So let's talk about like, like, what is it? What is the disorder? Yeah, I'll read it off exactly. Bipolar disorder is a treatable illness marked by extreme changes in mood, thought, energy, and behavior. Bipolar disorder is also known as manic depression because a person's mood can alternate between the poles. Mania are the highs mm -hmm. and depression are the lows. The change in mood can last for hours, days, weeks, or months. What bipolar is not, bipolar disorder is not a character flaw or sign of personal weakness. Wow. Okay, so that's kind okay. of the definition. Right, right. And I, and, I, and I may ask you to read that again before we, we get over here, but we're going we're gonna to kind of keep it moving. And, and can you tell us, uh, Mr. Troy, uh, once again, I want to shout out to everybody in the, in the chat. Um, Pastor Curtis, Lene, Paula, I believe some more people are on. But ha however, happy Friday. Thank you for joining QTV Multimedia, where our motto is, Pictures are worth a thousand words, but the video tells it all. We are the home of your marketing, graphics, design, promotion, and advertisement uh, company. And we are for hire. Check us out on YouTube. Please subscribe, like, and share. And also you can find us on Instagram and Facebook. Shout out to everyone and uh, much love to all the supporters. Uh, we have Mr. Troy Stephen, author, nonfiction. Uh, his book is titled uh, Bipolar, and I want to make Breaking Bipolar, Break the Whole Bipolar Disorder uh, Has Over Your Life. So um, back to you, Mr. Troy. So, so how is bipolar diagnosed? Not a medical test for bipolar. Mm -hmm. It's it's a uh, when people notice your mood swings, then highs and lows, and basically you get diagnosed by a psychiatrist. Of course, I mean you could you could figure it out yourself, or someone could tell you. But to get your official diagnosis is from a psychiatrist, and he'll you'll go in and talk to them, and he'll ask you questions. You know, mm -hmm. what are you feeling? What's going on? Um, a lot of times, by the time people go to see a psychiatrist, they've already had a really bad experience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they may already be on medications or they're put on medications. Um, not everyone has to take medications to manage their illness, mm -hmm. but in my experience, the majority of people do take medications. And that's the hardest thing for me and everyone else is to find the right combination of the right medication cocktail to treat your illness. Mm -hmm. And I struggled it for years trying, I probably tried 20 different meds, different uh, strengths of meds. Mm -hmm. um, when you start taking meds, they don't, you know, it's a ramp up stage where you take hundred milligrams, 200 milligrams for two weeks, 300 milligrams for two weeks, Word. stabilize it. 500 milligrams, that kind of series is how you go on the meds. So you, you really don't know it's, if it's working until you get up to that 500 milligrams and stay on it for a month. And then you're also on a couple other meds that you're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, they have mood stabilizers mm -hmm. or certain kinds of meds. Um, so finding the right combination of meds is huge in, for someone who's bipolar. Right. And I really didn't find my, the right combination of meds for me that I felt like I was always, okay, I, I could be better than this. You know, why is this I mean, having um, like shaky hands or all, you know, trembly hands? There's all kinds of little symptoms. Hey, I'm having this, but, you know, I'm, I'm working in an engineering career, but I know that I'm not optimal. And so finally in 2015, after my third episode, mm -hmm. which happened out in California, I found a psychiatrist and, and so finally came up with the right combination of meds for, for me. Episode, and now I'm, out in California, instead of going 30 mile an hour, so in a 60 I'm mile an hour zone, I'm going 60. So that's a, 
Uh, right, so right, how are you right. diagnosed? You, you, you know, you get questionnaires as to, is this going on with you? Is this going on with you? Um, you know, sometimes there's misdiagnosis between, hey, I, this person's bipolar or this person's just got depression because mm -hmm. the bipolar has both mania and depression. Okay, okay. Um, man, it's it's a fine line that, between you, that you have this information to uh, share with us today, man. I think this is, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm going to reiterate, I think this is, this is one of the uh, most important um, interviews we, we, we've done when we're dealing with the people and you know, um, and how that disorder uh, is. Now, I'm, 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 I'm not jumping off the subject, but I, I do want to ask this question for those that are in relationships and, you know, have a family. Can you speak on a little bit, like, how did that do your home with your, with your, with your family? Talk to us about that a little bit, though. Um, so I was married for 15 years. I had been married for three years when I had my first episode, my first bipolar episode. Um, you know, my kids were small at the time, so they really didn't know really what was going on. Mm -hmm. As time went by, I didn't have my second episode until 2005. So from 93 to 2005, I was on medication, mm -hmm. trying to, you know, learning to deal with the illness. Um, got divorced after 15 years. Whenever I got divorced, if I wasn't bipolar, probably. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, otherwise we had a great life. We went camping and went on trips and pretty, pretty successful. We had enough money to get by. Right. And I understand. Um, cool. Cool. Okay, cool. Yeah. cool. So now I do understand that you said it, it's genetic because I was going to ask you, are you, are you born with it? But you did say you, your father was dealing with the disorder as well, correct? Yes. Um, a lot of research shows that it is genetically based. Mm -hmm. Sometimes maybe your great grandma had bipolar, but your your grandma didn't and your dad didn't. And the fourth generation gets bipolar. Sometimes people are, have uh the bipolar chemical makeup to become bipolar, but it doesn't come about until there's some ma major stress, for example, mm. that kicks it off. Right. So I would We're say yes. Just this kind of lies dumb, uh, 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 dormant. Right. So I'd say you're born with it, in my opinion, but I would have to say yes. Right, right. But but we do know now that there are triggers that can manifest it to a whole other level. <laughs> right exactly right right exactly. right so 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 with the holidays coming up how does this affect someone with the um with bipolar disorder you know dealing with the holidays and stuff yeah definitely holidays bring stress um there's triggers for episodes they call them i have a list of triggers in my book but some of the triggers are stress mm -hmm. traveling um could cause a lot of stress to people. Yes, sir. Changing of time zones. Um, if you don't get enough sleep, that's stress. So the holidays, mm -hmm. also when the the uh, light starts changing in the fall mm -hmm. and you got less sunlight, people are prone to get depressed. In on the other side, in March and April, when the sunlight is getting more and more light during the day, people kind of get going to mania. Mm -hmm. But back to the holidays, there are things that you can, you know, like following my plan, some of the things that you can do is you should get out and talk to people every day. Don't isolate at home. COVID's called a lot of this to happen, probably made things worse, but I agree. it's a good thing to get out and socialize, talk to someone at least once a day, go coffee with your buddy or whatever. Um, right. Okay. If you're okay. feeling... Okay. Yeah, and if you're feeling that you're having symptoms, you know, don't feel like you have to go see see your mom up in Indiana. Things aren't good for you. Mm -hmm. You know, but do but do find to, some type of help if you are experiencing some of these symptoms, quote unquote. Yeah, so I have a uh, one of my weapons in my battle plan is a contingency plan, and this is like the last ditch effort to stop from having an episode and crashing and burning. So the contingencies plan is 
you have a agreement with your psychiatrist that you can call anytime, day or night, and that they'll talk to you, help you, or go, you go in and see them. You have a friend or a couple friends that understand your illness that, like my, my part of my contingency plan is my uncle Bud. He understands my illness. If I call him, he can talk me, you know, ask questions and zero in, are you having an episode or not? Um, one other thing that helped me a lot was when I'm, when I get manic um, and have bipolar going to an episode, yes, sir. it's funny because I'm fine. You know, my mood is fine. I'm normal. I'm at work. But then all of a sudden, almost instantaneously, I start having these symptoms like, you know, like I'm going to run across the room as fast as possible and get out of the building or it comes upon me suddenly. Mm -hmm. So, so I asked my psychiatrist about how to handle that. Cause you know, they could be extreme things. You've got to right, really get right, it under right. control. Right. And he said, uh, one of my medicines is uh, Seroquel also called quietopine. Mm -hmm. I take 500 milligrams of that at night. Mm -hmm. He said, carry a pill of that with you in your pocket and take it when these feelings come upon you. Right. It's, I mean, and it, and it also it sounds like um, um, panic attacks. A lot of people describe that kind of nature when people have panic attacks. So is this is bipolar? Is it a combination of a lot of maybe a cluster of other <laughs> whatever we want to call it? <laughs> it could be. Like I said, sometimes the diagnoses are close between each other. Right. Um, but my bipolar is more than just a panic attack it's continuous you know once you get into mania it's a continuous thing and my mood will fluctuate up and down um one thing i wanted to mention was the, the importance of the contingency plan to have a backup plan in writing that you're gonna you know what to do if you're you know you're in trouble up to 20 percent of people who are bipolar commit suicide it's a statistic Lots of studies have been so up to it's a dangerous disease. You know, you think about it, 20%. So we so so and, so so people, we 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 need to have a evacuation plan like like the fire drill. Yeah, like like I said, contingency plan, call your psychiatrist, call your buddy. What are you gonna do if you get into trouble? And know that in advance, have it have the numbers in front of you. There's also like suicide hotlines that you could call, national suicide hotlines or uh, bipolar text lines that if you have a um have this in front of you you know keep it in your car with you or whatever that you can pull out and then call these numbers or not you know right right get right. help basically you got to get help right right so so mr troy uh what would you say um about social media do you think it, it helps a person with uh bipolar disorder or it doesn't help that's a, I think it's based on the person mm -hmm. and how much they pay attention to social, social media, media and yeah. what the social media platform they're using is. Mm -hmm. I know for me, I like Facebook, I really didn't get into a lot when, okay, my, my buddy's having a birthday. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to pay attention to all that, but social media could be good because you could learn a lot of things. Like besides this, um, there's other bipolar meetings that'll go on that you could join in mm -hmm. um, like that and learn a lot. One of the things that's helped me a lot is bipolar support groups mm -hmm. that um, I, I go to a bipolar support group a couple of times a month. And so you're in person with six or seven, however many people, sure. they're all bipolar and you have a, a coordinator and go around the room and say what's going on with you. Having that personal interaction, social media though, you know, I'm talking about it's, could be good, could be bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of triggers could be on social media <laughs> if, if you don't handle stress properly. Uh, once again, I want to take it back to the chat. I want to shout out to everybody, man, that tune in. We have an uh, awesome guest today, author uh, Troy Stevens. He is the author of Breaking Bipolar. Uh, he's in the building, uh, joining us on QTV. We're just having a discussion right now about bipolar and some of the diagnosis and uh, some of the triggers and 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 he has an awesome um, game plan that is throughout his book through some of his chapters um, 
about the author, Troy Stevens has been battling bipolar disorder since 1993. Uh, he is a graduate of Purdue University and holds a master, master's degree in engineering from uh, NC State University. He has worked as an engineer since 1984. Uh, he is a proud dad of four. I think you said you have three grandchildren now? Right, right. So we want to shout out to his whole family. And uh, okay, let's let's jump into the book. Uh, we want to kind of give you the floor. You want to talk about, you know, some of the chapters and maybe give them some pointers. I know you say you had like one through 13. So if you have any partic uh, uh, particular one that you might want to give us some pointers on or a quick hit and miss, uh, take this opportunity to uh, do so. Yeah, great. So I have nine weapons in my battle plan. We talked about the contingency plan. Um, the next plan is that I call enemy recon. And this is basically learn as much as you can about the illness. Everything, you know, get a master's degree in bipolar disorder. Because mm -hmm. uh, you pretty much have to accept the responsibility that it's on your shoulders. You got to heal yourself. Right, right. No one's going to do it for us. One of my favorite phrases from the book is bipolar heal thyself. So the NEB recon is a good chapter. You learn, you know, it has the um, information about the checklist about mania and depression and hypomania, um, bipolar triggers. Learn all you can. Uh, the second, the next chapter is optimize your medication. And I have a, a you can a list of things that you can follow to how do you know if you're optimized on your medication. Mm -hmm. One of the things is every time you have an appointment with your psychiatrist in advance, figure out, am I happy? Is I'm having is bipolar affecting my life? What the heck's going on? Most of the times it is affecting you in some manner or other. So be able to explain that exactly what's going on with each of your psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. And he he can modify your meds, add another med, take one away. And that goes back to what I was telling you about. If you add a new med, you you start ramping it. So if there's a ramp up stage, 100 milligrams for two weeks, 200 for two weeks, stabilize for five weeks, come back, you know, say, come back and see me after the five weeks. So until you get to the 500 and sta stabilize, you don't know. And you have, you're taking other medicines. Mm -hmm. So being able to explain to your psychiatrist exactly what's going on to you at each appointment. For, so he could adjust your meds if needed is important. And, uh, you you need to find a psychiatrist you could trust. That's another chapter for my book is you got to find a good psychiatrist who knows what he's doing. You know, he's got some years in uh, treating this kind of illness in a hospital. Um, he's a, he's an expert and you trust him with your life. Okay. And then there's a ramp down stage on the meds. That's also an optimize your meditation where you're going off of a med. You can't just go from 500 milligrams to zero milligrams or else you're going to get in big trouble. So you got to ramp it down. And at the same time, you're ramping another one up. So optimizing your medications is a complex endeavor. Mm -hmm. But I would say to everybody that is bipolar to have hope that there is a treatment. There's the right kind of combination of medicines you can take. There's steps that you can take, follow a plan. Mm -hmm. and that there's hope and you could overcome it um you just got to keep battling it till you you know right you right, right. The right results. So, so real quick mr troy i want to go to facebook i want to shout out to monica uh delancey thanks for tuning latonio kelly we see you though kelly factor thank you mr troy going to a question on uh facebook uh troy do you have any suggestions for loved ones who may think they have a family member that may be bipolar how would you suggest they get help? Yeah, that's a tough one when someone hasn't been diagnosed bipolar, but they are having bipolar symptoms, mannerisms, and the wife or the husband is suffering because of it. You know, could be financially, this guy's going out and spending all the money, who knows what. Um, there, there are help groups, uh, support groups that people that who have bipolar spouses mm -hmm. that you can attend and learn a lot about it. Mm -hmm. um, if you're feeling dangerous because your spouse is experiencing, you know, you think your spouse is going to hurt you, you're going to have to distance yourself. Um, you know, you try to 
first of all, if you're a family member and you think someone's having a family member's having bipolar, but they're not accepting it, learn about it as much as you can. You know, it's highs and lows and learn what you can about it. Talk to your partner in a non-confrontational way and say, hey, you're having these kind of things and it's affecting our lives in these manners. You, you know, you should go try to see if you really have it. Go see a psychiatrist and see if uh, you are bipolar. Maybe it's something different than bipolar. Right, right. And um, also, um, of course, it's not a crazy question, but <laughs> drugs or no drugs? Because there are a lot of people in the community that have certain disorders and they are on recreational drugs. What are you, you know, what is one of your pointers? Like, you, you think something may help? You think it could all be bad? If you're going to tell a friend that's bipolar what not to do, I would say don't drink too much and don't smoke pot too much. And really, if you really want to help yourself, stop drinking totally and stop smoking pot totally. I ended up doing that after 15 years of being bipolar, you know? Um, so drugs aren't good, but you know, these days, so people that, people, even if you're not bipolar, people self-medicate with marijuana, alcohol. Right, right, um, right. These days, pot's getting legalized, right? So, and they're becoming more, and st the strains of pot are becoming more smooth and combined and effective. There's probably people that up and down A1A here in Florida, there's psychiatrists and people probably go and say they're, having, they're bipolar and they'll talk their doctor into prescribing medical marijuana, you know? Right, right, um, right. So it, it does that help? I mean, since we we're talking about the medical, because I was talking about recreation in the community, you know, there's them, them people don't have no prescription. <laughs> but for the medical marijuana, yeah. you know, is, is that something that happens? that get prescribed for the uh, individual? I think it does happen for people that have some kind of psychiatric disorder. They'll, they'll go see a doctor and get prescribed medical marijuana because mm -hmm. they, the person wants to, you know? Um, does it help? I don't know, you know? The right, jury's right. out, right? Right, right. One more comment from Monica Delancey. She said that uh, you are so brave uh, to tell your story. Yes, yes, he is, money. Yes, he is. So, uh, Mr. Troy, back to you on some of the pointers and chapters in your book. Um, you can start, you know, finish where you left off. Right. So I talked about the contingency plan, about enemy recon, learning all you can about the illness. I talked about optimizing your medications. I touched on finding the right psychiatrist in that chapter of my book, that weapon. There's a checklist of if you um, aren't satisfied with your psychiatrist and you want to find someone else, there's a list of questions that you can ask them. Um, don't just settle with a psychiatrist that you don't think is helping you, but don't, if you are going to go find a new psychiatrist, don't cut ties with the previous psychiatrist because they're prescribing your medications. Mm -hmm. And when you go to see it, if you're trying to find a new psychiatrist, it's kind of like a, it doesn't help when you're going to expect them to give you pr new medications out on the first visit. So um, find psychiatrists you can trust. So that's a weapon, finding your right psychiatrist. Um, train so, your mind. So they're kind of like um, you building your uh, defense and your, your, your um, how would I want to say this, um, your village that this doctor kind of do they work together. You, like you said, don't, don't stop this one. Because you went over here kind of because somebody has to follow your history, right? And your medical record. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, a lot of times you go to a new psychiatrist and I've had like eight different ones throughout my illness because I moved to different states. Okay. okay. Um, you What's go to a new psychiatrist hard? and yeah, getting to finding a good one is hard. Um, I've been lucky, though. I've right. been lucky. So you go to a new one. Basically, they'll say, ha call your other your older psychiatrist and have them send your medical records. So they'll get those medical records if they're going to start to treat you. But so, you don't want to cut. Go, go, go finish, finish. I had a question for you. <laughs> no, go ahead. So, so, go ahead. so, what what qualifies a, a, a doctor to 
not be a good doctor? Is it the, his knowledge? Is it you have to start all over when you meet a new one? How, how do we, how, you know, where do we, where do we, what makes them a, a better or good uh, doctor than, than the previous experience? Yeah, I, if you have good rapport with your psychiatrist, mm -hmm. easy to talk to, they'll listen to you, mm -hmm. address your concerns versus someone that is not, not a psychiatrist in your own mind, like they're not listening to you. They're saying, okay, okay you just need to stay on the same kind of medications, quit being a wimp, you know, right, um, right. Not, not giving you what you think is going to help heal you. You want to find someone who's going to heal you that you can trust that you can call 24 hours a day, day and night, if you get into a bad episode. Um, uh, I always like the thing about if psychiatrists have had experience in treating, you know, being in mental, mental hospitals, treating patients, that they have that, those years of experience because they, they know what's going on versus someone that's, you know, fresh out of school or not fresh out of school, but just doesn't have that experience in, you know, in their toolkit. Right, right. So up to date, is it fair to say that there's no cure? But but scientifically, the medical industry understands what they're dealing with, though, because we know what the diagnoses are and we know what, you know, these different uh, um, attributes that are um, given to the bipolar disorder. I would say there right now there's no cure for bipolar disorder. There's only treatment. Mm -hmm. And the best treatment is to follow a whole life wellness plan consisting of, you know, physical activity, getting a lot of sunshine. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of different steps you can take, finding the right meds, get a good psychiatrist, have a do, you know, follow a plan that's going to work for you. Put it in writing and but no, I don't there's not a right. cure. Right. Understood. Understood. So what, what, what do we have next, Mr. Troy? So I have a, what, one of my chapters or weapons is called train the mind. Mm -hmm. And I like this chapter a lot because if you think about it, your mind, you know, your mind, you're in control. And if you have a bipolar episode, then you, your mind's not in control. You know, it's taken over. It's kind of like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde kind of scenario. Right, right. So training your mind to have um, fallback mechanisms and techniques that you can follow. Um, one thing that I do when, you know, a lot of times when you're depressed, you're ruminating over past things that people said or events that happened even years ago. And you keep thinking about it, your mind's fixated on it. So when I'm, when I, I once I realize I'm having those kind of thoughts, those negative thoughts, then I, my psychiatrist came up with this idea, say out loud the, the word noise, and then switch my train of thought to something positive. Um, there's a, one of my favorite authors is Napoleon Hill. He wrote mm -hmm. Bank and Grow Rich. He has a, one of his processes or techniques is called auto-suggestion, where you you, you decide this is my major goal that I want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And then while you fixate your mind on, I want to accomplish this goal and you think about it and envision it and then think positive thoughts, then, then your subconscious mind will kick in and help you obtain what you're trying to accomplish. So auto suggestion is a good one. Um, awesome. Awesome. See. awesome. So there's several things in the chapter train your mind that, you can you can do the you know the the more techniques and powerful your mind is to be able to combat these symptoms and and you know it'll keep you know if you figure out these five different things that you can do in your mind these techniques you could follow and then that will keep you from having stress and being anxious and right. having these negative thoughts mm -hmm. those are the triggers for an episode. So learning in your mind how you can keep those triggers from happening is powerful. Right, right. So Mr. Troy, here's a million dollar question. Tell the people where to get this awesome book, sir. Breaking Bipolar is available on Amazon, uh, paperback or ebook. 
and it's available on Amazon as Audible. You could buy the, the audio book. And it's also available on my website, battlepress.media. But yeah, it's a great book. You guys should read it. It's right. We want to, um, we have opportunity um, to put that information uh, in the chat, hopefully, or it will be on the edited version. So can you give them that information one more time? Mr. Troy, do you have a cash app? You know, some people want to support you um, financially, or whatever, for your story. Um, you want to put that out there along again with where to find your your, your book. I really don't have a cash app, but I if someone buys my book, they're supporting me. You know. Right, 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 um, right. So, but yeah, right. you can find the book on Amazon, um, ebook or paperback or audio book, and you can find it on my website, BattlePress.media. And you get it a lesser price if you buy it through my website. Okay. All right. All right. And, and you and they can find you on Google as well. If they Google it, will they be able to find it? This is uh and give them give them the, the title of your book again. The title is Breaking Bipolar. Break the whole bipolar disorder has over your life. But when you Google it or go on to Amazon, just type in breaking bipolar and it'll it'll pop up. So before we get out of here, Mr. Trito, we don't want to hold you long. Um, we're going to give you the green light to speak on um, anything that we might not have talked about. Uh, if you would like, you can take this time to uh, give us uh, some information, some tips, um, however that be, sir. And I think it's said for someone who's bipolar is bipolar heal I say self bipolar heal thyself take complete responsibility for treating your illness it's in your hands have faith that it'll that you can overcome it um, I'm I've been fine since 2015 mm -hmm. not to say that I might have troubles in the future with bipolar but right now I'm on the right meds and I'm taking the right whole life wellness plan taking getting outside and getting sun, training your mind, training your body, find the right psychiatrist, recovering from a bipolar episode, mm -hmm. the contingency plan. So have a, a overall battle plan that you follow for overcoming the illness. Awesome. It's awesome. doable. You can get help through bipolar support groups. Um, there's, there's mental health um, coaches out there. There's a lot of things you can do to get help if you're bipolar. So don't give up. Have faith that you can overcome it. It's in your power. Awesome. Awesome. Mr. Troy Stevens, man, we thank you for joining uh, QTV on this happy Friday, man. And we want you to continue to uh, push, stand, and continue to write and uh, continue to give people that information because, like I said, it is very much needed. We want to go to, the, uh, to Zoom. Anybody on the Zoom has a question for Mr. Troy? Before we get out of here, we want to make sure we answer some of the questions if we could. Anybody in the in the chat want to uh, have a question for uh, Arthur, Mr. Troy Steven? Want to kind of do that quickly. If not, that is awesome. That is awesome. So one last thing for parents that might be experiencing some of that hardship from their teens. And I know we see what's going on with the teens. And I, I know we did say, you know, what what some of the things to look for, but in these youth, and I I, I do know you say, you know, the the um how we present what we're saying. Give the parents some some leeway on how to address it with their young ones and what to look out for. Could, could it be different with kids than adults? Is there a difference in the behavior? I would say it would be similar between kids and adults. Um, I can't imagine having a, a child that is bipolar and I don't know what the heck's going on with that. My kid, my son, my daughter, but something's going on and I need to figure out, you know, if something's really bad going on with your, with your kid, 
say they're feeling suicidal, take them to a psychiatrist, get them help, you know. Um, figuring out if they're bipolar or they're schizophrenic or are they depressed or are they just have panic attacks. That's tough to say, you know, to zero in on this is a diagnosis of, of my loved one, my loved kid. So between the two. And I wanted to test it. That's all right. I want to test that real quick on about the um, your prison ministry. Um, you know, keeping people off the streets, right? Yes. There's a someone told me a statistic that like 20% of or more of prisoners that are in prison have a mental illness. Mm. And that's, you know, that's scary. That's yeah, it is. Maybe they're in the in prison because something bad happened. They did something, they committed a crime, but it was because of a mental illness, but that no one knows they have that. Right. You know? Um, that's a tough one there. Right. And we also, even with the program, we also um we had a call yesterday. And I had to make sure I asked them that because you know, the the some of those disorders or 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 or, or um, mental disruptions are not always um, behavioral. And I tell some parents, you know, they have to maybe look into it a little bit more because it's more than a behavioral issue. You know what I'm saying? There's another cause behind it, um, Mr. Troy Stevens. Man, thank you for coming through with that awesome information, man. This is this is worth this is worth paying for, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, like you said, statistically, and I know people in the community, we know people that suffers with this disorder, and if they're not being diagnosed, they're going underdiagnosed, misdiagnosed, and then we have you know the recreational drugs on top of that, man. So we thank you for joining. We want to shout out again to all of our partners. Uh, project keep them off the streets you guys be sure to head over there like them on youtube and i mean um, facebook and instagram uh seeds lawn and hauling service clean outs lawn care local pickup and delivery you can find them also on facebook um you know this is qtv shouts out to dr harper over at ministry of the holy spirit hey this is has this has been wonderful man this has been a real learning experience for ourselves. And hopefully for you guys that are tuned in to YouTube and, and Facebook and stuff like that. Uh, Mr. Troy, thank you again, sir. This was this was awesome, man. Very educational, uh, very informative. Uh, you have anything you want to say before we get out of here? <laughs> well, I want to th thank you very much for having me on your show. No problem. Hope to see you back soon. Uh, if you have any uh updates or <laughs> whatever you whatever you have going on, be sure to uh to uh, let us know. You know what do you what do you have going on and uh, we would love to all uh, support it and uh be sure to stop by any 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 time sir all right you guys have a good one have a great weekend likewise likewise everybody tune in to my dog it's about to go back Q TV, multimedia. Posting people all of the time. We do the flyer design. Q TV, the Q TV, Q TV multimedia. Check out Q TV, TV Sunday. You're tuned in to Q TV. Watch Q TV. I'm glad Q TV. So man, so checking in with QTV Multimedia. Yes, sir. So, but this is QTV, you heard? Yeah, uh huh. All the way live in the ATL. All right. QTV show. Posting people all of the time. We do the flight design. QTV Multimedia. I'm not the sun, but I'm helping them shine with inquiry mind. QTV Multimedia. Let us have a visit to your brand. We can come up with a plan. Show you how to expand. Q Harvey is the man. In order to advance, he gotta take a chance. TV, more for media. Hey man, this is your boy, man. It's a big homie, two cup, shout it. Man, report live right here, Boom Studio, man. I got QTV, multimedia. What we gonna do right here is go back. Way back. <laughs>